There's been a lot of videos on all of the brand new cards that NVIDIA is releasing, and the new hype, and all of the exciting new things that are coming out. But we've enjoyed that Core 2 Duo with the 1080 Ti video. That was a little fun to do. And so we thought, let's just go ahead and start taking more examinations at like older technology. And so we found this little gem at a shop nearby us. This is the ATI Radeon 4770. My friends, this is one of the world's first GDDR5 graphics cards. It's not the first, but it's one of the first. One of the notable things about this particular card, however, is that it's the world's first card on 40 nanometers. So while the world is getting excited for Turing on 12 nanometers with GDDR6, we're gonna harken back to the days where life was simpler, where we only had 40 nanometers and we had GDDR5. But before we dive into the rest of the video and all of the specs and the goodness and benchmarking this, I wanna let you know that this video is brought to you by betterhelp.com forward slash UFD. If you've been looking for counseling, the BetterHelp is one of the most convenient, affordable, professional ways that you can get it done. They have licensed therapists that can meet your schedule, meet your needs in any different way that you need. And if you're finding that the current counselor that you're with isn't suiting you, then you can change no problem. Easy peasy, you just click a button and then you're matched with another counselor. You could sign up for $35 to $65 per week, and if that's too rich for your blood, they do have a sponsorship option available. So if you're over 18 and you want to get matched with a counselor in less than 24 hours, you can head on out to the link in the video description, betterhelp.com forward slash UFD, to get signed up and to just start getting better mental health because that's, I mean, it's a good thing for everybody. So let's talk a little bit more about this card. So while this is an ATI card, this did come after the merger between AMD and ATI. You can see right there that it in fact says advanced micro devices. So this is an AMD card, but still under the ATI branding. So this 4770 has 512 megabytes of GDDR5. It's not a whole heck of a lot, but it has a 128-bit bus and a total, I think, of around 50 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth. Compare that to the, you know, 2080, which has somewhere in the neighborhood of 400. This thing isn't too far off, but that, uh, that doesn't mean anything if we can't benchmark it. We can't actually play the video game. So we're gonna put it on our test bench with a 8700K clocked at five gigahertz. We've got 16 gigabytes of 3200 megahertz RAM, and we're gonna, we're gonna play some games that were popular back when this card came out. Some of the games came out a little earlier, but for testing comparisons, we're, we're using a whole bunch of different suites. Ah, so this card was actually released all the way back in June of 2009. It was announced in April of 2009. And even look at this, you have to enable overscan because it just can't keep up with the 4K monitor. It actually came out at around $105, $115. There was a rebate that brought it down to about a hundred bucks. And its main competitor back in the day was the 9800 GT from N NVIDIA, NVIDIA. It only has an 80 watt TDP, which I mean is high enough that it needs a six pin power connector, but it has 826 million transistors, 640 shaders, a 750 megahertz core clock, and an 800 megahertz memory clock. And while I tell you a little bit more about the benchmarks of this relic of a bygone era, uh, I'm gonna be playing a little bit of Unreal Tournament 3, which actually, doesn't too, look too bad. Basically, what I have to say is who in the heck needs ray tracing? Look at how this game looks from basically 10 years ago, 11 years ago. This is, look, look at this, this is amazing. Look at the frame rate that we're playing at. So this basically was one of the best mid-range cards you could get at the time. It, it actually ended up even beating one of its higher end counterparts, which was the Radeon HD 40, uh, 4830 which is very impressive. So this thing for a hundred bucks performed really well in most games that were out at the time. We decided to go ahead and benchmark it with the orange box as well as a few other popular games from basically a decade ago. Not only did we decide to benchmark the 4770, we decided to compare it to AMD's current mid-range lineup, which goes for a considerable amount more, $200 versus the hundred dollars of this card and see just how far has AMD come in roughly nine years. So in Portal, we got 120 FPS average on high settings uh, with, with the 4770, but the 580 got 289 FPS, which was actually hard capped by the game itself. You couldn't actually go higher than 289 FPS. The same is also true with Half-Life 2. The 4770 got 227 FPS, while the 580 again got 289 FPS because of that hard cap. Team Fortress 2 was a little bit different because it's an online game, so you can't necessarily guarantee uh, replicatable settings 
but we got 100 FPS with the 4770 and we got 248 FPS with this their RX 580. One of the worst games that we, we tried to benchmark was The Witcher 2. Yes, my friends, The Witcher 2 came out basically a decade ago, even though The Witcher 3 is one of the best games of this era. And the 512 megabytes that we have of VRAM on this car just could not keep up. It only got 12 FPS at the lowest settings possible, which was just absolutely, it was horrific. It was a slideshow. It wasn't even worth playing. Um, but then the RX 580 at the highest settings that we can muster got 119 FPS, which is a 900% improvement, even if you don't account for the difference in specs. The original Mass Effect as well got 36 FPS on this 4770, which was really great. And then the uh, 580 again was once again hard capped with a total of 62 FPS average. It looks like the game was locked to 60 FPS. Call of Duty Modern Warfare, one of the OG Modern Warfare games, got 67 FPS on this 4770. This is not the remaster, by the way, whereas the RX 580 got 453 FPS for a total of 500% gain, which is absolutely banana hammocks. Bioshock, the original Bioshock, at 93 FPS on this card. Uh, at 1080p in the high, uh, very high settings. And the RX 580 got 643 FPS for a total of 591% performance gains. And then the Unreal Tournament, as I'm playing right now, it's averaging 79 FPS, which is pretty good. And then the RX 580 can do 241 FPS. So even on a 10 year old game, uh, you can still play with a 240 Hertz 1080p monitor if you have an RX 580. And this game doesn't look bad. Who needs ray tracing? Who needs deep learning super sampling? Do you guys, are you guys seeing this game? It looks so good. I'm really trash at it and I'm not exactly sure what the, how to exactly play it anymore, but it doesn't look too bad. Okay, I'm gonna get the minigun. I'm just gonna enjoy this game for a little bit. So that, I mean, that basically wraps up this video. The card still performs relatively well, even in a modern title like Team Fortress 2, because you know, it's been updated for esports and what, what. And it was a really great card for its time. Uh, I kind of think that I'm really enjoying taking a look at more legacy hardware and exactly how, uh, how it performed at games at its time and uh, how the modern equivalent of that game uh, of that card can actually perform in the same games. I don't know if you guys like this series. I personally really enjoy it. The 580 versus the 4770. Obviously the 580 wins. And one of the biggest bottlenecks that we ran into is only having 512 megabytes of GDDR5 on this card. Um, but you know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a little performer. The world's first 40 nanometer card sitting right here with GDDR5 nearly a decade later when GDDR6 and 12 nanometers is about to come out. We are planning on taking a look at an NVIDIA equivalent sometime soon with the 8800 GTS, which was the top of the line mid-range card back in 2008. And uh, that, you know, we compare it to the 1066 gig to see how that goes. Do you have any other legacy hardware that you want us to test out? Any other relics of bygone computing eras that you think we would enjoy actually showing a video on? I personally really love playing with older cards. I love the opportunity to play older games. Uh, and I mean, we could try to get them to run on newer games, but at, in a lot of different times, like the DirectX support for this is only DirectX 10. And then you can't get Witcher 3 or any of the mono titles that have come out. Basically the most comparable game that we could do that everybody's still kind of playing is Grand Theft Auto 5, but I wasn't keen on actually playing that. So we have some DX9 games that we're jamming that were popular in the same era. But that's gonna wrap up this video for us. Did you enjoy this video? Let me know by hitting that like button down below. Also get subscribed to stay up to date on all of our tech related content. Want to remind you yet again that this video is brought to you by betterhelp.com forward slash UFD. So if you need affordable professional online counseling that is super convenient and just very very affordable check out betterhelp.com forward slash ufd the link for that will be in the video description as well as the pinned comment of the video i'm gonna wrap this up by playing some un more unreal tournament three i am just enjoying getting wrecked and uh kind of makes me want to play quake champions because i haven't played a fast-paced shooter in ages so uh yeah i'm signing off thank you guys so much for watching i'll see your smiling faces in the next video love you too Come here, Claw. I'll murder you. Oh, got a sniper. Actually hit him.